hello everybody as you know we are going to be doing a video virtual lecture and lesson for today this lesson is for the marketing applications you guys have been learning um quite a few fundamental things you needed to know for marketing before we start indulging in some more heavy um material so let's 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 begin all right so a couple of class announcements before we um get started with the lessons number one everyone needs to pay their their class dues it's 15 dollars. that's how i'm able to buy the different materials that you guys are going to be using throughout the year um it's going to be online when you go into your student portal you can go to your online school payments and you can start paying as early as october 7th now if you don't make your payment before january 8th i will give you a student obligation okay now um we will be having a swamp market officers meeting on wednesday october 7th at 3 45 p.m via the i'm sorry it's going to be at 2 45 p.m so please make sure um you don't put 2 4 3 45 is going to be at 2 45 p.m via the swamp market teams um gator news has been posted into um your teams please make sure you go check that out it goes through and shows um a lot of updates for coming back to school on wednesday and friday and also it, it, it also announces the winners of the sga and the class elections in our class our class looks a little bit different now we do not have any macs in the class all the computers have been removed so if you want to use a computer for the lessons that we're going to be doing then you can um you need to bring your own laptop now everything that we're doing you can access it via your phone um, but there are a couple of apps that you will need to download at home to your phone before you come to school so if you have an Apple phone, then I'm going to ask that you go to the App Store and you download Microsoft Word app, PowerPoint app, and Excel app. Because there are going to be some key things that we're going to be doing in these apps. And that's going to help you if you don't want to bring your own laptop to the school. Now, for my... 10th graders that have an iPhone, make sure you download the free Photoshop Express on your phone. This is going to allow you to do some things using Photoshop when we start using that software if you don't bring your laptop to school. I'm going to ask that the 11th graders, you download the Adobe Illustrator Draw onto your phone. Because again, if you don't bring a laptop, I'm going to say, hey, I told you to download it on your phone. So make sure you go ahead and just download the Adobe Illustrator Draw. If you are 11th grader that has an Apple phone or you're a 10th grader, download the Photoshop Express. Now, if you have an Android phone, then you can, again, you can go to the Google Play and download Word, PowerPoint, and Excel. But if you are a 10th grader in the Google Play, you're going to download Adobe Photoshop Mix. It's a free app. And if you are an 11th grader, you're going to download Adobe Illustrator Draw. OK, so make sure you download this onto your phone before you come to school. Now, again, the Gator News is found in your teams. There's a post that I posted um, last night at 7.22 p.m. And so please go through and watch this. It's very important. There's a lot of important information for you. So let's recap. All right. So about two weeks ago, we started this class assignment where you guys started learning about what marketing is, the fundamentals of marketing, and you had to complete this marketing notes document where you had to complete pages one and two. Well, last week we came back and we talked about um, the economic benefits of marketing, the um, utilities that associate and align with marketing, and you had to complete pages three and pages four. You also had a utility marketing practice activity where you had to take the item your group um presented on weeks ago and then you had to apply the form utility the time utility the task or information utility and the place utility to that actual item okay so what are we going to do today 
today we're going to learn about the fundamentals of marketing and we're going to be talking about um the concept of market um we're going to differentiate between consumer and industrial markets we're going to describe market share we're going to also talk about target market and then we're gonna talk about the four basic P's of marketing mix. So I'm gonna teach you the four basic P's today. The next class, we're gonna learn about the five and the seven. And then the following class, you're gonna work in groups on the marketing mix project, okay? Now keep in mind for this lecture, you need to have that marketing notes page, I mean, that marketing notes open because I am going to be lecturing you right now and I'm gonna be answering the questions on page five and six. At the end of this lecture, you will be uploading a completed page one through six for two grades. You're gonna upload it into Teams, into the Teams that says class lecture video and assignment for October 5th through 6th. You will upload it there at the end of the, today's lecture. So what is the market, okay? A market is all potential customers who have the ability and willingness to buy. That's what the market is. No matter what the product is, that's the market. Consumer markets, okay? Now, consumer market consists of consumers who purchase goods and services for personal use. But let's watch this quick video that's going to break it down even further. So with that being said, um, consumer market consists of a whole bunch of different factors. And within the, a consumer market, you need to understand who you're trying to target, what they like, their personality, their nationality, their age range, all of those different factors that you the 10th graders learned last year when they were in ninth grade. So let's go. Let's look at what is the difference between 
a consumer um, market and an industrial market. Now, industrial markets is a business to business, B2B market. It includes all businesses that buy products for use in their operations. So a business will go buy, buy products from another business. That's an industrial. But let's see what the difference between consumer versus industrial. Hey, do you want to know how we built a $50 million coaching company with just one forty-five? In this video, I'm going to talk about consumer market versus an industrial market. So be sure to watch till the end for all the details. So what's going on in this video, I'm going to be talking about consumer markets and industrial markets, how they're different, how they sort of compare and examples of them, certain products within that sort of industrial or consumer market. So let's go ahead and get right into this. this. I got a PowerPoint for this set up. I did this a couple of years ago, set this PowerPoint up and I thought it would be useful for making this video. So first let's get into it. Okay. So what is a consumer market? A consumer market is a market that creates and sells products and services to individual buyers instead of selling to a business. So this would be like your normal average day consumer and not some big, huge business. Like we're not trying to sell to a Apple, a Disney, a McDonald's, a Burger King, anything like that. We're trying to sell to just the regular person that's working their job. Like for instance, McDonald's. We're not trying to sell to businesses. That's not our goal. While we can cater to businesses, the main goal of McDonald's would to be um, just sell to the average person who's going to work and then getting their dinner and going home. But my example that I had for this was um, Best Buy. It's got 33.7% of the consumer electronics market, which a, is a huge market. And with Best Buy, they mainly target um, millennials because most millennials are studying in college right now or just getting out of college. And millennials right now are using that technology in a way to where they can really put themselves ahead of the game against everyone else. And one product in particular is the Intel Core i5 laptop and I've got a marketing mix right here for that and the price of this is $59.99 and it is exclusively at Best Buy stores only so you can only get this at Best Buy which is huge for Best Buy once again they already hold 33.7% of that market share and some of this could be why because they have laptops like this that are exclusively at their store and a promotion um, when I made this PowerPoint they were actually doing a promotion for Best Buy that sold the product $150 off and they were advertising this in newspapers online and I think even in a couple commercials so that was one way that they were really promoting this and doing a marketing mix for the laptop itself and that is sort of a consumer market and just the basics of it right there. All right, let's get into an industrial market. An industrial market is a market where business market goods and services to other businesses instead of individual buyers. So this is where we're selling to those big companies and those businesses. So like, let's say you're a lumber company and you're selling to um, a Home Depot so they can get your product and sort of sell it as their own in some way. And one example of this is Siemens. They're an industrial electronics market and they have 12.1% of that market share, which is pretty good. And the target market is for massive large scale companies focused on expanding with technology and sort of going into the new age of where you have to have technology sort of in everything to make your business what it is. And one example I had of this is the uh, technological advances in Walt Disney World. So what they were trying to sell to Disney was advanced technology and I could not find an exact 
price on this. I couldn't find a cash amount anywhere that Disney paid, but I do know that there is promotion. And promotion was one thing with this, is that at the end of every fireworks show in Epcot in Walt Disney World, after the fireworks um, on the huge Epcot Ball Spaceship Earth, they just project the entire Siemens logo right onto that ball. And that is the hugest advertisement I've ever seen is that they just project that onto a giant ball. And also, of course, while they're announcing the fireworks and everything, that's sort of how they're doing it is when they announce it, they'll say this fireworks show presented by Siemens. So that was an example of a consumer market and an industrial market and really how to separate the two. So let me know what you guys think. Can you give me some more examples of industrial markets? Because they're not as common as the consumer markets. And I will see you guys in the next video. All right. So now that you know the difference between an industrial market and a consumer market, make sure that you have written some important notes down on this because next class I will be giving you a Kahoot quiz based on what you just learned. All right, so let's talk about market share. Market share basically is a company's percentage of the total sales volume generated by all companies that compete in a given market, okay? So um, Google, AOL, Yahoo, MSN, AxGs are all in the same market. And each one you see, they hold a certain part of market shares, of course, Google being the largest. So target market, this is what's the most important thing that you have to understand for this project that you're going to do and just working in marketing, period. For target market, you have to focus all your decisions on a very specific group of people who you want to reach, okay? Of course, last year in ninth grade, the ninth graders learned about customer profiles, but 10th grade, um, 11th graders, you're going to learn about that now. A customer profile is a profile that you create. You, it's basically where you develop a clear picture of your target market, the businesses that create the custom customer profile. In this customer profile, you're going to have your target market, you're going to have their ages, you're going to have their income level, their occupation, their attitudes, the lifestyles, the geographic reference um, residents. All of this has to be in your customer profile. Will you be will your group be doing a customer profile for this marketing mix project? Absolutely. So now let me ask you this. Who is the customer? The customer are the people who buy the product. The consumers are the people who actually use the product. So with that being said, is mom in this picture a the customer or the consumer? What about the kids? Is the kids the customer or the consumer? So if you said that mom is the customer, you're absolutely right. Mom is actually the customer and the consumer because she bought the toothpaste and the toothbrush and she actually used it. But the kids are only a consumer because they actually use the product. Make sure you know the difference because this will be a question on the Kahoot quiz. So the marketing mix. Now, there are um, seven different marketing mixes now, but in the beginning, there were just four. So we're going to learn the four basics, market, um, the four basic marketing mixes, the four P's today. Next class, we'll learn the five and the seven and so forth and so forth. So we're only working and focusing on the basic four P's. Okay. So they are product, place, price, and promotion. Now I'm going to be going through with you each one of these because you will have to show all of this in your marketing mix presentation. All right. Now, again, before we move forward, I want you to understand there are five P's and seven P's depending on who you ask. You will learn about those later. We're only focusing on the basic marketing strategies, the four P's. Now, product strategies. 
product strategies basically deal with what product to make. You got to be able to decide how you're going to package it, what brand name to use, what image to project. Place strategy deals with where you're going to, how and where a product will be distributed. Okay. Is that place accessible and easy for your target market and consumer, I mean, customer to get to and access? Price strategy. Okay. With the price strategy, you want to make sure that you reflect what customers are willing and able to pay. And you want to also make sure that within your customer profile, you identify how much money they make and what they do so that you will know whether you, how you can project what they're willing to pay, how much your profits will be and so forth. Very important. Now, promotion. Okay. For promotional strategies, you have to know how potential customers will be told about the new product, what the message will be for your product, and when and where it will be delivered. Now, very, very important. This is the most important of all, because if you don't do good with promotion, you won't be in marketing or have a business for long. So what I want you to do now is I want you to pause this video because I am going to play an Apple video and you will need to take this Apple writing review document from the team's assignment and open it up. While you are watching this video, you need to answer these 15 questions. It's in order by how it comes in the video. And then you're going to submit this assignment via that team's assignment that you received today. So pause the video and then play it back when you have the Apple writing review document open. Okay, so welcome back. Let me go ahead and play the video for you and play close attention. You need Managing to answer social media campaigns with monday.com is easy. Play close attention. You need to answer all 15 questions. How easy? This easy. After years of dominating the technology market, Apple has become synonymous with the words brilliant, creative, and innovative. Apple is one of the greatest marketers of all time, with the iPhone becoming arguably the most popular and recognizable smartphone in the world. Apple's consistent marketing excellence is built on a series of core values, which others would benefit from learning from and applying to themselves. Apple has mastered the art of being ahead of its competitors. One of the primary reasons why they're able to be leaders in the industry rather than a follower is their amazing ability to innovate and keep things fresh. With every release, there is always some new technological advancement that strives to push the industry forward. Whether it's a new chipset allowing their products to be more powerful or the wireless AirPods that have become ubiquitous around the world. Apple's dedication to the customer experience and their ecosystem of products is the key reason why people flock to Apple stores and line up for hours just to get their hands on the new release. The importance of a first impression cannot be underestimated. Much like in person, the fact is that you make a judgment about something in approximately four seconds, and this is finalized largely within 30 seconds of initial contact. Apple knows this ensuring that they mastered the art of minimalism. Product aesthetics, user interfaces, the brand logo, support functions, and even advertising are stripped down to the fundamentals. Apple's obsession with minimalism isn't solely about aesthetics. Rather, it's a crucial piece of their overall business strategy within the Apple ecosystem. Every component of this minimalist network is designed with related components in mind the Apple TV interface isn't too different from that of Apple Music, whilst Apple Music itself borrows from the basic feel of Apple's operating system. Meanwhile, the gadgets also take up the same sort of family feel. The iMac, MacBook Pro, iPad, and iPhone 
they're all radically different devices, but they're immediately recognizable as cousins, thanks to their shared detailing and material palette. This highly integrated, minimal aesthetic is priming you to enjoy Apple's other products, ensuring that when the new iPad is released, you already know how it works and that it will fit within your own personal home environment. When Apple brought out their first iPod back in 2001, the response from the press was apathetic. MP3 players were already around, and this new release was nothing new. In fact, most MP3 players were actually better than the first iPod. They had larger storage space, replaceable batteries, and they were cheaper. So, what did Apple's new iPod have to offer that other MP3 players didn't? The iPod looked cool. It had a sleek aluminium shell half the size of its competitors, and a scroll wheel that could zoom through the trademark 1,000 songs in your pocket. This easy-to-use, sleek iPod made the entire process from downloading your favorite song to the listening experience a simple and enjoyable experience. Apple has a legendary focus on customer experience. Every customer touchpoint, from the products through the user experience, and even the retail store yields a consistent Apple experience. This clean, seamless, just works mantra ensures that every layer of the ecosystem works straight out the box, providing a logical experience that makes the user's life easier and more enjoyable. Apple's consumer base buys into their ecosystem, expecting a high quality, polished experience from start to finish. When pairing this high quality experience with Apple's aggressive expansion into every facet of our lives, it's no surprise that their products, apps, and technology have become an integral part of our modern lives and routine. What's up, business owners? So my name is Tan. I apologize. YouTube charge um YouTube makes you watch a so if you're watching this video, you probably I apologize, guys. YouTube makes you watch a ad. That's how they get paid. So let me go ahead and skip that and get back to the video. Routine. Apple's approach to the harmonious integration of external developers, manufacturers, and services with their own catalog of products creates a thriving mesh of technology, creating a sort of ubiquitous computer all around us all the time. A key example of Apple's integration outside of their traditional devices is their integration seamlessly into the fitness industry. Wearables have become far more than a fashion accessory in recent years, with their ability to play your favorite high energy playlist whilst also collecting valuable biometric data for those who are serious about their progress and development. This now vital bit of kit can play an essential role in your daily life and is often the difference between lounging on the couch and finishing that 10K. When a piece of gear has this much influence on your life and routine, you'll be sure to place a lot of trust and belief in the product, further solidifying Apple into your daily life. Much like Louis Vuitton or Chanel, Apple is associated with high quality, luxurious and trendy products. To ensure that they maintain this image, Apple carries out a range of marketing practices to ensure that they look like the premium luxury company they claim to be. This brand identity is reflected in the pricing strategy of Apple, with all products undergoing fixed pricing. Due to Apple's unique market position and their ability to market their products to other channels, they can avoid dropping prices a process that ensures they maintain that luxury goods appearance. This strategy also extends to the microcosm of Apple retailers, dealers, and resellers, where Apple implements a minimum advertised price. This sets a lower limit on the prices its resellers may advertise Apple's products, keeping prices relatively comparable to their own stores and with minimal wholesale discounts. This maintains the static high prices that Apple sets, distancing themselves from low-cost, inferior products. As we mentioned in our video talking about Tesla's marketing successes, having a small community of evangelists that support your brand through thick and thin is a vital step for brand longevity. They will support you during your hiccups and will push you through the other side. This group won't dare stray away from the Apple ecosystem, ensuring full integration 
and making sure that their friends and family are aware of its benefits. Marketing through word of mouth is a priceless marketing strategy for any business and is hands down the most effective and reliable type of marketing. According to the Wharton School of Business, a customer you acquire from word of mouth has 16 to 25% higher lifetime value than those you acquire from other sources. Word of mouth will bring in loyal customers and increase customer retention rate. What's more, this highly valuable marketing strategy has no price attached. It's a side effect of the it just works high quality product that Apple strives for. Competing in today's world can be tough. Being able to establish any kind of advantage can set you up for success over the competition. However, having a dedicated group that ensures your product is talked about in a good light, is shared on social media, and welcomes itself into everyone's life goes far beyond paying for adverts or product placement. Apple has continuously strived to create great products with a great experience attached to them. This dedication to the customer has paid off huge dividends, making Apple one of the biggest companies in the world. Apple is not just changing an industry, it's changing the world, reshaping it into a customer-focused economy and planting itself right in the middle of it. If you've enjoyed today's video, please click the like button and leave a comment below to let us know any topics you'd like us to cover in future. All right, so it doesn't get no much, no better than Apple's marketing. But um, once you have finished answering all 15 questions, go ahead and upload that, add that work, well, upload it to your OneDrive, but then add it to your the team's assignment. Um, and if you missed a question, just go back and watch the video. You can pause this and um, the video is also on the class uh, website on class videos. Just look for the Apple video and you'll be able to go back and rewatch it. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward. So one of the things that I did not mention before was um, you have to be able to persuade and induce people to want to buy your products. So that's something that Apple does really well. And that's a form of promotion. So for the marketing mix that we're learning today, the four, that is product, place, promotion, and price. The four Ps, the four basic Ps before we they added on um, three more. So the four Ps contains countless alternatives. With management, you must select the combination of marketing mix decisions that will satisfy target markets and achieve organizational goals. Now, we've come to the end of the lecture, but next class you will be back getting you will be getting back into your groups and you'll be working on a marketing mix project. I'm going to first lecture the um, additional three Ps and then you will um, get into your groups. So for today, you want to make sure that you have completed your Hold on one second. Within Teams, you want to make sure that you have completed your um, Apple assignment that I just went through, that you just went through. This needs to be uploaded to Teams and also your marketing mix, um, your marketing notes guide. All six pages need to be com completed. If you did not complete a certain page, then you need to go back to either the class video website um, to see the videos where I gave all of the answers, or you can go back into your posts. Well, guys, um, go ahead and turn your work in. And once you've turned your work in, you are done for this class period. I'll see you next class.